At age 23, I made over $200,000 playing poker. Join me on this journey in real time, starting from one single $300 buy-in at 1-2 to a game in Vegas where we buy in for $50,000. Here's where we're at now. Let's go. If you guys had any idea how long this took me to set up, you would definitely judge me. I kid you not, this phone holder probably took 30 minutes to set up. It's because there's actually a lot more variables that go into it than I initially thought. First one being, is that you have to put it in a spot that you can obviously see when you're driving. Two, is the same spot has to be good when you're vlogging. Three, I had to figure out how to actually attach it to the windshield. And four, I had to assemble the dang thing, which more than likely was not made in America. Day two of the challenge is underway. We're headed to the casino now. And I actually, I gotta be honest with you, I was gonna go to the casino yesterday when I was on the way to buy these little microphone things. Hello. But I just crashed, just beyond tired. So I decided to use this as a sign to just not go to the casino. And today I feel 10 times better. The last session that we did was obviously insane. We literally couldn't have asked for a better start to this challenge. Of course, when I was going back editing the video, I realized we ran unbelievably hot. I think we hit three gutters. We flopped quads, we flopped the flush, all within like two hours. I mean, if we just get a quarter of the amount of run good that we had in that session today, then we'll be more than good. Enough out of me, we're gonna get in there. Well, first we have to make our way to the casino because it's beyond crowded down here in Fort Lauderdale right now. So get to the casino, play some cards, and hopefully have a successful day two of the challenge. Let's go. First hand we're gonna get involved in, six four of diamonds. There's a limp, I make it $10 on the cutoff. Button, small blind, and the limp are all call. The flop has an ace on it, which should be pretty good. Checks to me, I can't help myself. We have six high, we have some backdoor draws, and maybe if they just have some random cards, they will fold. So I bet $15. The button folds, so we're gonna be playing this hand in position at least, but both of the other players call. In this moment, I'm literally regretting every single decision I've made in this hand so far. Lighting money on fire, just thinking about me being stuck at the 1-2 stakes for the rest of this bankroll challenge. The turn comes a 6, so now we have somewhat of a showdown value, which most of the time is just never good. It checks to me, and I decide to check back. The river now is the Jack of Spades, or it might have been the Jack of Clubs. It was a blackjack. It checks to me once again. Okay, I think it's pretty apparent that we do not have the best hand, but on this board, I think we are going to be the one who's going to have big, strong hands most of the time. I don't think anybody's checking two pair. I don't think anybody's checking a straight. So with that logic, I'm going to turn my six into a bluff. Once again, I'm very well aware that I'm probably just lighting money on fire. I decide to bet $80. The small blind snap folds, and the player in the hijack tanks for literally ages. After around three minutes, he comes to a decision, which is call. I table my six, and he has a hand that we put him on, but it's even worse than we thought. He has 9-10 offsuit. Okay, let's just get on with the next one. Getting wrecked in the first hand. Next one, we have king eight of hearts in the big blind. There's a button straddle to five, small blind calls, I make it 25, and only the player on the button calls. 10-3-2 with one heart. We don't have anything, but it's actually not that bad of a board. A lot of big cards come that we can barrel on, and also we have a backdoor flush draw. I decide to bet a small sizing of $20, and he decides to call. So basically we're praying for an ace, a king, a queen, a jack, a heart, or maybe an eight. I think an eight's probably good too. The turn is one of those cards. It comes to the six of hearts. We still have king high, but one of the best turns to barrel on as we pick up a flush draw. I now bet $70, praying that he doesn't do anything tricky like going all in, or calling would kind of be bad too. But luckily, it doesn't come to that, he snap folds. So finally, we get a bluff through, maybe a little bit ambitious, but hey, it can't be that bad when the pot is being pushed our way. Getting in a little bit of a rhythm now, there's one limp under the gun, where in the cutoff, we make it $10 with a suited ace. We can make an ace, a straight, a flush, a lot of good things going on. Small blind calls, lumber calls. Flop is pretty good. We go ahead and flop a flush draw. Checks to me, I bet $15 and they both call. Turn is a brick 
And considering they both called on the flop, I think I'd rather just get there before piling in money. So action checks around. 10 of diamonds on the river. We go brick, brick. We're still sitting here with ace high. Small blind now leads out for $10. Limber folds and very tilting as we're getting like a million to one with ace high. But we're never good here. And I'm just not really in the mood to try to bluff him off of a queen or maybe a 10. So I let it go. And hopefully we can hit our flush in an upcoming hand. I'll be the first to say this hand isn't my proudest moment. I'm in the hijack with queen jack offsuit. There's a raise in early position. I call. Big blind now makes it 30. I've been at this table for probably around two hours now, and I don't think this player has been involved in one hand. And he certainly hasn't raised any hands. Matter of fact, this hand he three bet, so he certainly hasn't been three betting any hands. Nonetheless, early position calls, and in position, pretty good price, I decide to call. The flop comes queen, four, deuce, rainbow. Actually pretty frustrated at the situation because I'm probably gonna have to peel at least one until the big blind bet $75. Early position folds, and I'm just coming to my senses, just realizing in this spot we're probably way behind against what's most likely aces or kings. If he has queens, we're even in worse shape. So with that logic, I'm just going to pick a better spot. Frustrating to flop top pair and folding, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. In this one, I decided to make it $8 in the under the gun position with two red queens. Note, I think for the most part, I probably should be betting a little bit bigger pre-flop. These players just tend to not fold, and with pairs, especially big ones, it's probably better to go heads up or two ways to a flop than have like the whole table calling. Luckily, in this hand, we only see two calls, the plus one player and the player in the small blind. So we're gonna be going three ways to a flop. The flop comes king five six with two spades, a very wet and draw heavy board. Checks to me, and I very well could be checking here, but I think a bet is good sometimes too. We can protect against flush draws, straight draws. So I bet $16. The player in the plus one position calls, and now the small blind makes it $65. Well, hands that we are losing to would be a hand such as king x of spades, pocket fives, pocket sixes, and five six suited. I don't think he's playing five six offsuit. That being said, we still are ahead of a whole bunch of hands. Straight draws, flush draws. I think I'm able to peel one more of my exact hand. Also, this is the only player at the table who I think is probably capable of bluffing in this spot. Play with him at the 2-5 game a good bit. I toss in the chips for the call, and the other player behind me gets out of the way. The turn is the Jack of Diamonds. Doesn't change a whole lot. Praying to see him pump the brakes and check, but no, he goes all in for $160. Ugh, obviously not the best spot in the world. You can still have some bluffs that I think continue on the turn, such as maybe Jack X of Spades that picks up a pair now and just goes with it. But for the most part, I think players at these stakes just are not going to be bluffing in this manner all too often. But once again, it's very close because with my exact hand, we unblock so many of the draws that he could have. So very, very on the fence. But just considering that this is the only player at the table that I think is capable of probably making a move here, I decide to call, obviously not loving the situation, praying that we see a clean river, which we may already be in pretty bad shape. The river comes to two of spades, so now we're almost beating no hands besides maybe a missed straight draw. He flips over a hand that I did not expect him to have. Five, six offsuit. Ugh, I feel like a fool on this one. I release my cards and try to stay level-headed going into the next hand. I'm forced to add on for $300, so now we're in this game for $700. We're already eating into our bankroll. I'm in middle position with two sevens. I decide to make it $10 and we see three calls. The flop comes jack jack four, it checks to me, I put in a C bet of $20, and we see one call from the player on the small blind. The turn comes a six, so pretty safe card if we were ahead on the flop, we are still ahead. But now she leads out for $20. If I raise, I'm not sure what hands can call that we beat, so I just decide to call in case she's bluffing or valuing a worse hand, and the river comes a two. I mean, this is a pretty good round, if we were ahead on the flop, we're Probably still ahead here on the river. If she has 5-3, I'm literally gonna leave immediately and probably not come back for about a week. When action's on her, she bets $35. Pretty straightforward spot, I think. She could be blocking with a smaller pair, such as a four, maybe a weird six. Maybe she has pocket, I don't even know, like threes. Sure, she could have a jack once again, but I think the price is too good. 
I toss in the chips, and she says we're probably good. She shows five for a diamonds. So one of the few hands that we do beat, and we're gonna take down a somewhat decent pot. This is probably the most bizarre hand of the night. We have queen eight of clubs, we do the button straddle, the cutoff limps, I make it 15, and he decides to call. The flop comes seven, eight, three with two spades. He checks it, and we have a pretty good hand, top pair with a pretty good kicker. So many draws on the board, I decide to bet $15. Now the player decides to check raise to $45. I swear, I've been put in more weird spots in this game than I have in almost any other game in the past year. Like, what in the world could he have here that beats us? Pocket seven, seven, eight, pocket threes? I mean, I don't think he ever has an overpair here. I mean, I would imagine nines plus would re-raise preflop or raise themselves. On the other hand, there are a good amount of bluffs here, or semi-bluffs rather. A lot of flush draws, straight draws, 9-10, 5-6, maybe 6-9. He could have a pair plus flush draw. There's just a lot of stuff that we're ahead of, so I make the call. The turn looks pretty safe, it's an offsuit 4. So the only hand that he could be bluffing with on the flop that now beats us is 5-6. He continues for a wager of $75, leaving himself with around $150 behind. I'm pretty sure that we do have the best hand here. I think he's just way more weighted towards draws in this specific spot. So if I call this bet and the river breaks out and he bets once again, I'm probably gonna have to call off. But I think there's also some merit to going all in now. Sure, there's gonna be a small percentage of the time where he snaps us with a better hand, but I think the majority of the time is he's gonna have a draw that we're ahead of and he's gonna be forced to call off. Also, there might be a percentage of the time where he has a big draw, such as two overs and a flush draw that has a good amount of equity that folds. I don't know, I just feel like going all in is probably a decent idea here. So that's what I do, and we get snapped. The river is the jack of spades, so now we beat literally nothing. He is quick to flip over pocket nines. Ugh. I think that's like the only over pair that plays this way. Just one of the few hands that does have us in pretty bad shape. Kind of a silly hand. I mean, we don't even have that good of a hand pre-flop. We inflate the pot. We get a pretty good flop. We unblock every draw. Kind of frustrating to be honest, but in hindsight, I still don't think I hate the play. In this hand, I'm in the big blind with ace king. There's a few limps. I make it $20 and we see one call from the player in early position. Well, the flop comes six, four, eight two hearts we have zero hearts in our hand not the best flop in the world i pump the brakes and check it and he decides to check it back the turn is pretty good it's a four so if we were ahead on the flop i think we're probably still ahead here on the turn i check it and now he bets 30 dollars not too sure what to make of this he could be taking a stab with some random two overs i think our hand's good enough for one street of calling at least so i toss in 30 and we're off to see a river which comes in offsuit five now it's a four liner. I check it and he's very quick to check it back, which probably indicates he has some sort of showdown. And yeah, he has way more than just some sort of showdown as he shows queen four of diamonds. Yep, we are gonna be losing this one as well. Not a lot going on for the next 30 minutes or so. We win a few small pots. I decide to put on the bunt shuttle, bump up the variance, try to win some bigger pots. The small blind limps, two other players limp. I bump it up to $35. And now the small blind goes all in for $65. Folds to me, obviously never a bluff, but we're down and we're not getting that bad of a price. So I make the call and we're off to see five cards. Yep, the flop is no help. The turn is no help, but wait, the river we might have bailed out. It comes a 10. I just immediately show my cards and he pretty quickly mocks. Please tell me that this is the turning point. I beg you. Literally about to lose my mind as we fold for like an hour and a half straight until this one. This hand, I just have no clue what I'm doing. Early position makes it 10. Player to his left calls. I call in middle. It's a late position with two sevens. The player to my left, which I think is the cutoff, he makes it... $25. All the players call. When it gets to me, I think we have a pretty easy call. The flop comes nine highs, so not that bad. Checks the initial aggressor. He continues for $50, leaving himself with about $22 behind. It folds to me, and a question whether we want to fold or go all in because he only has $22 behind. Honestly, it's pretty close. He very well could have an overpair here. 
but he also could have two big cards, maybe a flush draw. I mean, the odds are he probably has an overbear. But to be honest with you guys, I folded for the last like hour and a half, and this was the only spot that I felt like I could make some money back in. So I just put him all in, which is probably not the best play, and he quickly makes the call as I figured he would. The turn is another low card, and the river is another nine. Actually, a pretty good run out if we were ahead, but we never were as he has two red queens. If you guys haven't noticed, the reoccurring theme of this session is to just put all the money in while we're way behind. We are back with the same exact can, pocket sevens. I make it $10 from the cutoff. We see the button and both the blinds call. Thank the Lord we finally get a real flop. Queen seven four with two hearts. <laughs> Did I just, <laughs> a real flop, like none of the other flops were real. <laughs> it checks to me and pretty straightforward bet. I bet $15. The player to my left, unfortunately, isolates. So he makes it $45. The reason I say unfortunate is because he did not have that big of a stack, whereas the other players are very unlikely to call now. Sure enough, that is exactly what happens. It folds back around to me. Obviously, I make the snap call. The turn is a queen and the river is a six. We are gonna be winning this one. Not the biggest pot, but nice to see some chips being pushed our way. Going into the last hand of the night, we look down at the best hand, pocket aces. I feel like it's corny to say that now because every single poker vlog says the same exact thing when you look down at two aces. Nonetheless, I'm gonna say it again. We look down at the best hand, pocket aces. I make it $8 and both the blinds decide to call. The flop comes 10, three, four rainbow. About the best flop we could ask for. We're very, very likely to sell the best hand. The small blind dunks out for $10. The big blind calls. And I think I should probably be raising here, just targeting a 10. But as you guys can tell, I'm not playing my best poker today. I just make the call, which I don't think is a huge mistake, but I definitely prefer raising. Going to see a turn, still three-handed, which comes a two of clubs, putting a backdoor flush draw on the board. Five, six did get there at the straight. Also ace five, but I'm kind of disregarding that for a few reasons. The small blind leads for 30, the big blind folds, and she only has $90 behind. So I think it's probably a good idea just to put her all in, targeting a 10. So that's what I do, and she snap calls. Ugh, just based on her demeanor and how she called, I already knew I was behind, and I was correct, as she shows ace five offsuit. Ugh, uh, it's even more frustrating to see that hand than five six, just because we do have two of the aces, and what is the needle on top, or the cherry on top, whatever you want to call it, is the big blind had ace king suited, and he just played it so passively and avoided losing his whole stack. So just those two sequence of events honestly put me more on tilt than I have been in a very long time. So instead of battling, I just decided to call it a day and head home and end day two of this challenge. Good thing I didn't press record one second earlier because this lady, her, she almost hit me about the session. That was brutal. <laughs> I mean, I don't even think we can sugarcoat it. I just played miserably, like just miserably. Oh my goodness. The main takeaways about playing in these smaller games is to bluff less, call down light way less frequently, or in other words, I guess, hero call less. And lastly, bet your strong hands more often and or bigger. Like you just don't have to be balanced in these games. Not that I was balanced today or was really even thinking about that, but. You really just got to follow those main, those three main rules and you're generally going to be in pretty good shape. And uh, the reason I left when I left, to be honest with you, was I actually was pretty tilted. Way more tilted than I have been in any recent 2-5 game or even a 5-10 game for that for that matter. Is that last game when I had aces, sure that lady hit the gutter, you know, it's unfortunate. But the big blind just announced that he had ace king in that hand and just defends the big blind. Well, we normally probably should have got his whole stack. And, any other game it is what it is you know what are you gonna do we lost this one we were in the game for a thousand we were out for 255 so we lost a good bit of money we gave back a lot from our first day but it is what it is we're gonna be back tomorrow and we're just gonna make those adjustments and hopefully win some money back thanks guys i'll see you guys in the next one yes i'm in i'm in the drive through i try to <laughs> you like how i try to hang up before i pull up the order that's just funny all right guys peace